John, welcome back to Paris. You've got some happy memories, um, something from a couple of years ago of going deep into the tournament. So, um, how are you feeling coming into the week? Yeah, I, I feel pretty good. I always do enjoy coming to this tournament here in Bercy. I, I love this city this time of year. I think it's so beautiful. Um, I, I love the weather. I love everything about it. So I think that's one of the main reasons I've, I've done pretty well here um, over the past few years. You're closing in a qualifying for the ATP Finals um, in London for the, uh, for the first time. What would that mean to you? Yeah, it would be super special if I were to uh, qualify for that. I definitely still have some work to do this week. But everything I, I want to accomplish is, is out there in front of me, and it's just up to me to go out there and get it. I would, I would love to be there in London to play in that final eight. I've, it's such a special event, of course, and I've seen it on TV before, and it's what all of us players um, aspire to get to. Is that something that would affect your preparation for the week mentally? Are you, do, you, do your coaches talk to you about trying to either block it out or actually, right, you're going to focus, this is the goal, yeah. where you, what you need to achieve? No, it, it is the goal. I mean, I know that. And, my coach knows that, but we're not talking about it too much. Um, the, you know, certainly London is, is the end goal, but right now the first, first and foremost, got to try to take care of business as best as I can here in Paris. Now, you've obviously had a great year and you won your first Masters title. Um, what sort of confidence does that give you mm -hmm. coming into a Masters event where you've already done so well? Yeah, it, it, do, it does give me confidence. Um, being able to secure my first ever 1,000 title was, was huge for me. And to come back here, there's something to be said about coming back to an event that you have good feelings, good feelings at and you've performed well at, well at over the past years. And I've certainly done that here in Bear Sea. So it's, you know, right now it's all about preparing as well as I can and getting out there and, and just, uh, just letting it rip. Win or lose, life is good and just see what happens. This competition has uh, thrown up some sort of unusual names over the past few mm -hmm. years. You have one-time Masters winners, people like Ferrer, Jack, last mm -hmm. year. Why do you think that is? What, what makes Paris maybe a little bit different to the other Masters events? Well, it's, uh, it could be a combination of, of things. I mean, some of the, I guess, over the past few years, some of the top, top players maybe have been a little bit nicked up uh, coming, in, coming into this event, and maybe some of the players, I'm just speaking for them, I could be totally wrong and might be looking ahead to London and focused on that, but you know, it does have a as you said, this tournament does have a knack of creating some um, interesting results for sure. I mean, David Frere, but he's a guy that's been at the top of the game for, for so long, and Jack last year and uh, versus Krijanovic in the finals was a very uh, interesting final for sure, but well, that's what makes tennis so unique and, and it's what makes the men's game you know, there's so much depth right now that anything really, really can happen. You touched upon um, Jack winning last year, he's a very good friend of yours. Can you put it to context what sort of achievement that was for Jack last year to win his first Masters? Because obviously now you've been <coughs> through the, the same yeah. thing, so yeah. you know, he must have been able to give you advice or... Yeah. No, he, he didn't give me advice. Uh, I think if you, sp you speak to him, I know in his, his first match he was down 5-1 in the third. And it's just one of those things he won a match maybe he shouldn't have won and then after that he gained so much confidence and it just snowballed from there and Jack's always been a player that when he's got confidence and swagger on his side he's going to be incredibly tough to beat and that's what he was able to develop over the course of this week last year and it carried him to the title and it carried him to the final eight event in London as well. As moving on to just a, a, another player very briefly um, kind of relevant for us British Carl Edmonds had a pretty good year. Yep. Um, how big a force could he be in the coming years? I think Kyle can be a huge force. He's still very young, and in my opinion, his game's got a lot of room to grow. I think he can still improve so much on his backhand side. It's not that it's a weakness. It's just that his forehand is such a massive weapon. He's got a huge put-away shot in his forehand. It's one of the best forehands in the game. And apart from that, he does, he does everything so well. He moves well. I think the most important thing is, though, he's got a very good head on his shoulders. He seems to work incredibly hard. Um, so I think someone like Andy Murray, someone that he's always looked up to, has been a, been a huge help to him.